Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps you unlock your magic mojo. I'm Kelly Sparta, your host. And yes, Jules is not here today. So for those of you who know this show, you're going, wait, that's the wrong voice. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> uh, but I have Kathy here instead. So if you've been a longtime listener, you're going to know that. Uh, but before we do that, let me finish the, the opening discussion because, of course, I don't have it in front of me because I don't normally do this. It's not my job. Anyway, if you're new here, you should start with episode one. Uh, if you are an intermediate student or more, you should start with uh, episode 98. And if you are an advanced student, start with episode 200. Uh, and it, so now I'm going to say Kathy's here again. So this is Kathy Shiron. Kathy has not been with us in, oh, God, it's probably been a year and a half, two years, something like that. Yep, I um, think so. Yeah, so Kathy was on the show regularly when we were doing the mythology series, um, but Jules, <laughs> Jules had a problem at work. They said, you can't podcast from here anymore, and she went, oh, crap, and now she's trying to figure out how to, how to do it from home, if it's possible, and whether or not she's going to be able to continue on the show, so we're, uh, we're trying to figure that out, and so you're going to hear, hear me um, doing this for uh, at least a few until we figure it out. So, and Kathy has been so kind as to pinch hit for Jules last second and, and come in and talk with us about spiritual entrepreneurship today. So, um, so I'm really happy to have you here, Kathy. Thank you. And I'll have you, You're welcome. I'll have you introduce yourself to the audience again in a minute. But um, before we do that, I promised on the last episode that I would talk about the tree drama. And so uh, I don't want to leave anybody hanging just because Jules isn't here. So, uh, as you know, because uh, Kathy and I have been friends for you know twenty some odd years, um, as you know that when we were in Richmond, there was massive trees coming down in the backyard, and that that was the, the whole tree drama. And we talked about it extensively on the podcast for a while. Well, uh, last week we had a you know we were in windy season here in Panama, and one of the trees in our backyard blew part way down, and and the only reason it didn't take out the brand new fence is because it it landed in another tree, which held it up until we could get it taken down. But yeah, so I, I don't know what it is about me and trees, man. <laughs> but, but it better stop before I buy the house here because I'm done. I'm done with the tree drama. That's all I can say. Um, so yeah, that thankfully it came down fairly quickly. It was a one day thing. It was so much less drama than the, you know, four month ordeal that, that we had in Richmond. Uh, which resulted in, you know, six weeks of us burning nonstop to get all the brush burned. So, yeah, so this was far it's an easier. indication of moving somewhere else. And since you're looking at somewhere else, the tree came down to say, yep, time to do that. Hey, However, there you, go. you might want to look for a different indication because trees dropping in place are probably not optimal. No, I really don't like them. Yes. So pick it's up, you know, place. pick something else. Bird flies over, craps on your shoulder. I mean, like that. <laughs> I had that too. <laughs> See, I, perfect. I, not me, but my car. I, I parked. So I went down to visit with somebody new that I had met, and and I parked in the Centro, which at night is like bird. I mean, it's bird central. I mean, you go there and it's just so loud, all the cheeping of all the birds at, at dusk in the centro, which is the center park in the middle of the town. And I just parked, I parked on the very far edge of the centro and I walked away and I got into the car with somebody else and I went somewhere else and I came back four hours later, bird crap everywhere on my car. I mean, everywhere, every possible surface of the car had bird crap on it. I was like, Okay. I wasn't going to talk about that, but you mentioned bird crap. So, You know, we're just attuned this way. Our brains are aligned. It's time to talk about the guano. Guano, guano. Oh, you're going to be fun today, I can tell. <laughs> Kathy's hey, already put her, her moose, moose fingers up and said yes, that she was moose a tree. So. I, was, I was being a tree. But, being but think a tree. about this. Always look on the good side. You weren't driving a convertible. <laughs> yes, yes, that is that is in fact the good side. So, and I got to, when I got in the car, I got to go up to this beautiful uh, coffee house in the mountains, uh, and then look out over the vista. If you if you're on TikTok with me, you will have seen that posted. Um, I haven't I haven't cross posted it to to Facebook and Insta yet, but um, it is up on TikTok. So, yeah, that was fun. 
So anyway, but today we're going to talk about the spiritual entrepreneur and the power of presence. And, but before we do that, I want you to introduce yourself again to the audience because you haven't been here in so long that, you know, I, I don't expect people to remember you. So um, not that you're forgettable. You definitely are not. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. just to be kind to the audience. Yes. Okay, so, so tell people about you. Being kind to the audience. All right. Kind audience. Um, <laughs> my name's Kathy Shiren. Um, I have been doing magic, shamanic work, all the rest of that good stuff for doing math, 36, about somewhere between 35 and 40 years. Um, so it has been a major part of my life for a very long time. Um, for a while there, I was bifurcated because I was being both a corporate executive type, which was, hey, let's mess with the left brain. And in, on weekends and, and time off, I was running off to pagan events and doing magic. And so it was kind of like those were two different sides of my life. And then I, at one point I realized, I really don't have to keep these separate anymore. Um, and so I merged them back together and uh, started using more, uh, call them shamanic principles, um, in work-related things, which uh, presence is one of those. Um, I also did a doctorate in transformational dynamics, where I, yep, I am an, I'm an official FUD um, PhD, and uh, I got the, the doctorate in looking at change. I wanted to know how people made effective change. And um, I, I wandered through psychology and psychotherapy as a disciplinary area, and organizational transformation, and esoteric studies, and ended up um, looking at a particular ritual sequence uh, for on sovereignty to see, you know, to assess it from all these different disciplinary perspectives as to, you know, was this effective? Was it not effective? How did it, were outcomes predictable, et cetera, et cetera. And deriving actually a framework for how to make powerful transformational um, events or actions. So that was, that was fun. It took a long time. It scared my PhD committee to death. They turned over three times. Um, they're like, ah, you're changing people. I'm like, yes, that's the intention. Kind of, that's the point. That's yes. the point. Exactly. <laughs> Transformational event horizon. Run away if you have to. And they did. <laughs> and they did. Yeah. yeah. The the ones that stayed at the end said, well, you know, working on your PhD with you changed us. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the point. Um, but anyway, Hello, so McFly. It, yes. It's been a fun ride. Um, I've used the principles, shamanic magic, you know, all the rest of that stuff in my life for a very long time and have uh, a number of, in fact, I can't think of any of my friends who are not in some way or another connected to magic. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. Uh, once you get there, once you understand it, once you're working with it, you really want to hang with people that, that get that kind of energy yeah. and can um, ride the wave with you. Yes. Or at the very least, be able to navigate the wave to you. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah. Sometimes we don't ride the wave together, but we often will look at the wave and go, tsunami coming, get down. Right? <laughs> tsunami coming, get the board. Get the board, <laughs> baby, get the board. Yeah. yeah. Get the board. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so. being friends with, with shamans is very, <laughs> it's a really interesting life. <laughs> You know, I keep introducing it to people, too, like uh, I got an accountability partner 10 years ago. And so I've been slowly talking about things about, well, you know, she's got this surgery coming up. Well, you know, I'll send you some good juju. You know, we talk about this and that and the other thing. And she's like, oh, oh OK. You know? <laughs> so it's uh, the, the uh, people 10 years, you're me, more patient than I am. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, it's water torture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. Yep. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, the, the thing is, it's, Kathy and I have been working together for years. I mean, we were business partners for a while. We we're, we we're, uh, you know, she works in the company with me now. She she's co-leads the, the Woo You program with us, uh, with me. And, um, and uh, we'll eventually, when she gets her ass down here to Panama, she's, she's the reason I'm in Panama, by the way, guys. Uh, when I said I need to get out of the country, she said, how about Panama? I was like, what the hell is Panama, right? So it's all her fault. 
And uh, thank you very much. And no the uh, so when she gets her ass down here, uh, we will be doing retreats together again. Um, and doing sort of the transformation style retreats as opposed to the uh, the workshop style retreat that I'm going to be doing in November here in Panama from November 8th to the 14th, which is uh, Adventures in Energetics. And so uh, we're going to be doing that here. There's only 20 beds available, so I will have a maximum of 20 beds to fill. And uh, so it's going to be an intimate environment, and I'm super excited to do it, and I've actually gotten pricing on it. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is yet because my students get first dibs, and uh, you guys are only going to hear about it if the students don't fill it up first. So I, uh, I, that's how I do it is I, I want my existing clients to get first dibs on everything. So. Uh, if you are interested in the retreat and you want to learn more about it, make sure you join the, the newsletter. Uh, it's at the bottom of the page. You can fill out the newsletter or you can follow the link in any of the show notes to the Boundaries for Empaths download and get that for free while you join the newsletter. And then you'll get informed as soon as we make the, uh, the, the event available to the public. I don't do early bird specials. The way I do it is the first people to sign up get the best rooms. And that's the benefit for signing up early. So... Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing there. And then let's go into our topic for spiritual entrepreneurs. Oh, oh, I do need to say for the Adventures in Energetics, it is a not beginner event. So if you are still a beginner, if you don't have basic shields, if you don't know how to ward your space, if you don't know how to cleanse your energy field, maintain your energy field, know how to manage your own emotions, things like that, you are not qualified to take this event. Uh, to attend this event, okay? You have to have all the basics down in order for, for you to come to this particular event. We will do other events that are, are beginner friendly, but this is not one of them, okay? Okay. Spiritual entrepreneur, the power of presence. So when I talked to Kathy <laughs> yesterday going, uh, I need help, she, you know, we were going to be doing a different topic and she's like, I don't know anything about that topic. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really either. So <laughs> I'm not sure why it's on the list. And uh, so, you know, we, we punted to this, uh, which is uh, Kathy's idea, actually. So you want to talk about why you picked presence as the topic? Um. I picked presence as the topic because for me, being in the present moment is the only time you can actually enact change. Yes. Okay. Um, the past is the past and it's done. You can learn from it, but to the extent you turn around and attach yourself to it, um, there, you know, I wish it was different. It ought to have been different. It wasn't fair. It, all very true statements, but if you're Velcroed to it, you don't, you waste the present moment for enacting anything different. Yeah. Um, another way that presence gets wasted is worrying about the future, right? Well, what's going to come? What's going to happen? What's this? Well, then I've taken my now and I've wasted all of it in terms of being out of the now. So as a spiritual entrepreneur, as a magical human being, as someone seeking to make um, you know, real change in their lives or even just fully live life. Um, being present in the now is the only way to do that because now is it. Everything else is either behind me or in front of me. Right. And I have a moving now, of course. I, you know, the pa now? past minute now? is different than the present minute. <laughs> but um, I, the, for me, when you add focus and intention to now, you create magic. Yeah. Well, and this is one of the things I was actually talking to a group of my students, my spiritual coach certification students uh, earlier today, and I was discussing the, the centering, right? Centering being the, the point of stillness within, right? Um, and the difference between centering and grounding and going up into spirit through your crown chakra and, and all of that. And so I, I kind of feel like we have to talk about that to talk about this because presence evolves into that no matter what um you know if you're gonna if you're gonna try and use it to do magic you have to go from presence to stillness to magic right to focus to magic right and so um the when you are grounding you are connecting into the earth 
and into something outside of you. And the same thing is true when you go up through your crown chakra and connect to the universe. It's something outside of you. You're doing it from a place of duality, right? So you're, I am, I am an entity by myself and I am connecting into things outside of myself. When you are centering, you are coming into the center of your beingness, which is the part of you that is the all that is. And so you are now connecting through the, the non-dual state of yourself, which is the all that is. And so you're connecting into everything through connecting into yourself because you are everything and everything is you. And so that's, that, that's in your center. And so that when you come into your center, you inevitably, because if, you, if you're starting in presence, presence is just being in the now, right? So no future, no past, being in the now. And then you come into your center where you're connected to the all that is, which is all time, actually, too. So you're, you're in the present moment and in all time at the same time because you're in the all that is. And so then it's... It doesn't actually feel like that, so don't freak out. So you don't have to worry about that. But that that is true. You're in the eternal moment of now when you do that. And so you're connecting into that space. Now you're in full stillness. And now from here, you can focus your intent because you are connected to the all that is. And now this is the ultimate place of creation because you are everything and everything is you and all of creation is available for your creativity, right? And so that's where magic comes from, right? So that was a whole lot and a dissertation unto itself. But, uh, you know, there are other episodes on stillness and focus and things like that. I don't remember exactly what episodes they are, but we've talked about it before. So, you know, go, go do a little search and you'll figure it out. And um, so there's, there's that. But the when we're talking about spiritual entrepreneurship and we're talking about presence and the power of presence in spiritual entrepreneurship um give us some examples uh you know we're, we're going to brainstorm some examples of ways in which presence really makes a difference so and we're talking specifically about like spiritual coaches or psychics or energy healers or things like that. So that's, that's the context that we're going to talk from for this part of the conversation. So um, I know you had a couple that you mentioned in the beginning uh, before we started recording. So you want to talk about those? Sure. Um, in terms of uh, like, if I'm in a coaching session, spiritual coaching session. Okay. If I'm thinking about uh, yesterday, tomorrow, or if I'm even in my head about asking myself, how do I be of service to this client? I'm not being present to the moment with them. So if I'm present to the moment with them, all my chitter chattery stuff is out of the way, right? It's, right. it's not impeding the energetic connection between me and the client, which right. means I'm hearing at multiple levels. I'm seeing at multiple levels. I am present with the client in a way that they feel safe, supported, heard. And in those moments, you can tap into things that they're like, oh, how did you know that? Right? Yeah. And or you you'll pull, pull a random, quote unquote, random thing, example, yes. and they'll be like, oh, my God, how did you know that that was what's going on for me? It's like, mm, well, I'm tuned in. Right? Yeah. But yeah. you can't be tuned in if you're not present to them True. in that moment. Um, and observational even, being present in the observation, like somebody who sits there with their feet up on the chair. Ooh, problems with grounding. Yeah. Okay? Problems with anchoring. Problems with feeling safe and supported because they're holding their feet up in the chair. They can't keep them on the floor. Okay, because right. that isn't an okay place to be. We gotta pull up. Um, and that's just one interpretation. I mean, I'm not saying sure. every time somebody has their feet in a chair, that's what's going on, because you have to be with them. You have to be present with them in order to get the fullness of what's going on. A lot of, I mean, in traditional coaching, people listen, right? Yeah. In spiritual coaching, you're still listening, but you're listening on all kinds of levels. Yeah. And when you're present, you're listening on the energetic, you're listening on the mental, you're listening, listening on the emotional, you're lis listening on the spiritual, you're taking all that in. 
so that the coaching, the support, the healing that you can offer your clients is really of a, of a full spectrum kind of yeah. place. But you can't do that if you're not present. Yeah. Well, and when you're listening at that level, when you're, you're just taking in the information, right? Um, I, it's, it's like you're sitting in the soup of what they're delivering to you on an energetic, emotional, mental level, right? And uh, even, you know, sometimes you're tapping into the ancestral lines and you're tapping into past lives and you're tapping into guides and, you know, all sorts of stuff. There's like, there's so many different dimensions in which you are operating that the human brain doesn't really do. And the human brain doesn't do multidimensionality well. And so it's, it's more important than anything to be connected into the all that is, into yourself, into the present moment, in order for you to be able to hold all that information because you're holding it in the larger realm and allowing the all that is to provide you with the answers that your brain is not equipped to, to provide. So people will ask me, you know, how did you know that? And I'm like, I just, it came to me, you know? <laughs> and it came to me because I'm holding it in the, the ethers and I'm, I'm allowing it to be in multidimensional space and I'm allowing the different elements of it to bang into each other until they go <laughs> and then there's the answer, right? And that requires not trying to control the conversation, not trying to control the dynamic, not trying to control the, the end result, not trying to jump to the answer before you've gotten all the information because you'll always end up with like a third or a quarter or, you know, an eighth of the answer because you didn't get all the information first. You tried to jump to an answer first. And so when you, when you allow everything to come into being in the ethers and to be informed by the language that's being used to convey it, because, you know, the language that you're using is just this itty bitty little minuscule amount of information. And if you guys doubt that, binge like 15 episodes and tell me whether or not you're sleeping well because <laughs> of this podcast, because I am downloading information to you here. So, you know, take a night off every now and again if you're binging hard so that you have time to integrate, right? Because it's just the, the words are just the smallest minuscule amount of energy um, that is being put into this puzzle of the the larger picture of the um, the energetics of the person themselves, the the belief structures that they're espousing as part of the things that they're saying, the the ancestral line stories that have been passed down for generations, the past life uh, issues that have been passed through to this life. Uh, the, the body memories of the emotions that are stuck in different places in the body, the ability to, um, you know, the, the, the emotions that they're not expressing right now in this moment because they don't feel safe or they don't feel like it's okay or whatever, the things that they're holding back and not actually giving voice to or giving availability to, the, the social dynamics of the country in which they operate, the family in which they were raised, the, the society in which they live. Um, all of these things are, they, they play into the larger picture of what we are doing when we're doing spiritual coaching. And those combined together, they're no, I don't care how smart you are, because Kathy, you and I are pretty smart cookies. Kathy's a Mensa member. I could technically be, but I never wanted to be. Um, but, the, you know, we're pretty smart cookies, but our brains can't hold all that crap right? There's no way your brain can hold all of that stuff at once. You have to allow it to be around you and sit in the soup of it and allow the things that are relevant for you to say in this moment to surface. And you won't be able to either sit in the soup or wait for it to surface if you're all attached to the outcome and trying to think about what am I supposed to say next and how am I being and am I being good enough and are they doing it, you know, what, well, you know, oh, what if this means that? No, no, no. I was like, you know, you can't do that. You have yeah, to, yeah. you have to be in presence, right? It's, um, and one of the ways to get out of presence is to be judgmental. Yes. Because judgmental steps you out of presence and into judgment. Yes. And it's judgmental on the client, judgmental on yourself. I mean, I remember when a message came through for me for somebody I recently met 
and it was a very spiritual person and I really wanted to make a connection to. And the message came through, call them and tell them this. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I can't do that. I barely know this person. I'm going to call them up and sound like a complete fruit loop. Okay, this is the self-talk, right? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't go away. It literally was a vision and it wouldn't go away. I couldn't see anything else. And I'm like, oh, right already. So to just make it worse, when I called, I got the message machine. So I, had, I couldn't talk to them and get any sense for whether they thought I was losing it or not. Um, I had to leave it on a message machine. And I had to say, okay, well, you know, I don't know why, but I have this message, and there's this image, and it's this ego, and da 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 And I hope you don't think I comp I'm a complete Fruit Loop. Thank you. Bye. Okay? <laughs> and then I didn't hear from him for like a week, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm done. You know, this is, this is not a friendship that's ever going to evolve. And um, I, heard him, I heard from him about a week later, and this guy was the Vatican's diplomat to the Middle East, who had been raised by his Yaqui Indian grandmother. Okay, so, um, and he was having a problem with a, with a cardinal in a particular area. And that vision was the answer through Yaqui interpretation, which I didn't even know. Right. I don't know Yaqui Indian, nothing. Not that okay. you even knew that he had a Yaqui Indian grandmother. Didn't, didn't. Yeah. You know, I knew he was the Vatican's diplomat to the Middle East. I didn't know anything else. Right. Right, and I knew he was cool. Um, but the, uh, so he goes, that vision was the answer for what I needed to do with the Cardinal. And he says, I have no idea why you got it. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, me neither. <laughs> me neither, except that it pushed me to do something uncomfortable. But right. that's what you're talking about, what the brain can't hold. And then when you get in your own way, right, yeah. of, well, I don't want to say this, you know, they're telling me to say this, but I'll look like a complete dumbass, though. You know, I'll lose my client. I won't get paid. I won't make my friend. <clears throat> Sorry, whatever else it is that is necessary. Right. And yeah. you, you've got to get out of your own way and be present. You've got to let go of judgment completely and, and go with it, because there's a reason you're in the position you're in with the person that you're interacting with. And right. that's because you have that capability and can be of service to them in that moment. Yeah. And that's, hello. Okay. My neighbors are home. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the, the horn. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> my neighbors are home. Yeah. So um, the, uh, you said something that I want to come back to, which is so critical, which is, um, or crucial in this case, because critical would be a pun, uh, which is when you step into judgment, you step out of, out of uh, presence. presence. Yep. And, and, and it's not just, I wanted to add one more concept to that because you said whether it's judgment of the client or judgment of yourself, but it's also judgment of anything that happened to the client. Mm, so if yeah. you have a client talking about having been abused in some way and you judge the person who did the abusing, you're still stepping into judgment yep. and you're stepping out of the flow of the container. And you know, so I, I actually worked with a client once and I had her sitting in my living room and we were talking and this went on for like three hours. I kept trying to bring it back into the place where she had to see, you know, there was a thing she needed to see. Right. And I would we would have a conversation. We'd go out way over here and then we'd come back in. I'd pull it back in and try to land and she'd go and we're way over here now. And we'd come back in and I try to land for for three hours, we went through this dance because she was in such, such resistance around hearing the issue. And if I had ever stepped into judgment, I would not have been able to do the thing that I did at the end, which was three hours later, I looked at her and said, okay, so if this and that and that and that and that and that and that, all the things that we'd been talking about for three hours, I said, if all of that is true, then, and I pulled the, the, the string and collapsed the entire container into, then this must be true. And she just looked at me and she literally tensed up like she had been trapped inside the thing. And she looked at me and went, that was brilliant. This was her last tra try to not see it, right? That was brilliant. I can't believe you did that. I said, we're not talking about me. We're talking about this, right? And she was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, 
this is the thing. And she's like, okay, that's the thing. But it's still brilliant. Okay, you can talk about the brilliant, but after you say you get the thing. <laughs> she's like, yeah, right? But it, it, that, that had to happen, you know, because she was, again, the smarter the person, the more difficult it is to get them to where they're going because they will come up with way more avenues to get out of whatever it is that they're in when they're in resistance, right? The smarter they are, they're going to come up with different ways to avoid going into the thing that they know they need to go into. And so this is why I love working, working with really smart people <laughs> because they, they're used to being able to dance around other people. And when you are holding things in the ethers, you don't have to be smarter than them. You just have to be present. Right. And spirit will look at you and go, thunk. will go thunk, thunk. Every time there's something they're trying to take you to, where it's not relevant, spirit will go thunk. And, and you'll be like, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're coming over here. And, and there'll be a little push in their energy when they're talking about something that is relevant to the, the issue at hand. There'll be extra energy behind something they say, or they'll repeat themselves, or they'll avoid a topic entirely that was really obviously necessary to talk about. You know, these are all ways in which you can tell that there's something going on. But every time they try to drag you down another avenue that isn't relevant, spirit's just going to give you a little thunk. And you can say, nope, we're not talking about that. We're coming over here. We're going to talk about this. Or you which, can be quiet and ask spirit for what to talk about, right? Which, exactly, that comes back to presence. Right. If you're not being present to the moment, then spirit can go thunk, thunk, thunk all at once. But you're too busy thinking of something else. Like, well, how do I get her back on track? And blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and, uh, and you come back to the importance of presence in the whole process. I had somebody do that to me once. I'm, oh, yeah? I'm one of those smart people that dances mm -hmm. around, dances around, dances around. I finally got to somebody and they asked me the usual questions and I did my usual dance routine. And um, they looked at me and said, hmm, that's complete bullshit. How about we talk some truth? <laughs> and I went, oh, you're right. Shit. <laughs> you know, but I was I ready did. in that moment. That was right. a person who was being present to me and where I was. And in that right. moment, I was ready to hear that what I was doing was bullshit. Right. And I needed to get real. Yeah. And uh, it, I never forgot that. It was it was a um, it was the right time at the right place. And it was because the person doing it was present to me and listening to that greater collective for what needs to happen here. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you're when you're in your spiritual entrepreneurship and you are you're doing your coaching or you're doing your healing and you're doing your psychic readings you got to stop the second guessing. You got to stop the thinking. The thinking is a problem because if you're in your head, you're out of the multiverse and you're not actually able to hold the energy because you're in your head going, ah, 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 ah. you're in control. You're, you're in a control pattern. Let's, let me say that differently. You're in a control pattern, which is your safety pattern, trying to not look stupid or not look ridiculous or not be wrong or, you know, all the things that we set our valid validation and our value on. Um, and that's, that's how that happens. And so when you can just be in the multiverse and be with whatever is going on, the ethers, right, um, then everything just evolves and and you know sometimes it doesn't move sometimes it doesn't you just sit there and nothing happens and i just sit and wait in those instances i'm like hmm. and if nothing comes i look at the person and i'm like okay so are you actually open to this because the energy is closed exactly right exactly. and and you know i can't do anything if the energy is closed so you have to ask yourself if you're in the process or you're not yep right it's not about me, right? I'm here in presence to what's going on. I was having this conversation with my students earlier today too, which is that sometimes, you know, I'll have a client often, I'll have a client who's coming in in the afternoon or the, you know, the next day, and I'll have an experience that is out of context for my life. 
So, like, my life doesn't generally have a lot of drama, and I'll have something super drama-filled. Or I, I don't get depressed, and I'll be depressed. Or, you know, whatever. They're, they're just emotions or things that just don't make any sense for my life. And I always know that I'm like, oh, that's about my client coming in. Mm -hmm. Because they're tapping into my energy because they're anticipating coming to see me, and all my clients are empaths, so they all come and tap into my energy. <laughs> And leave us a, a, a smear of whatever is going on for them. And I pick up on that, right? And so, you know, I, I will know sometimes what's going on with the client before they ever walk in the door or, or, you know, sign on to Zoom or whatever, right? And that's just because I'm in the ethers and that's what's there. And, you know, it's like something's looking ahead and saying, oh, you need to do, you need to know this. Or I'll have an experience similar to what they had. Uh, a couple of days in advance because the universe went, oh, you need to have a perspective on this. You need to have this experience so that you have this perspective and you have your response to it so that you can then share that experience with your client who can then see it from your perspective instead of theirs and that'll help them to move it, right? Sometimes that happens. And that's, again, being in the ethers. And, and you know, we talked about this a lot in the mythology series where we were talking about how once you start to understand the mythology that forms the foundation of different cultural constructs, then the stories are actually incorporated into the energetics around us, whether the average person knows them or not. We are all of, 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 you know, the children of our ancestors who all knew these stories at some point. And so it's built into the energetic framework, into the 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 weave of the web of life. And when you know these stories and when you understand them and you can start to see things from a, uh, an, an archetypal or from a mythological perspective, then you start to see how things like this happen. And um, you can see them coming because you're like, oh, we're in this archetype right now we're all we're playing out this story right now okay so that means that something's going to come that's x y or z because this is how the story goes right and so you know that is super helpful as well and you can see that playing out in people's uh, energy fields as well and so all of these things go into to being you know this is a being a life coach is different than being a spiritual coach definitely and it's a, it's a much more rich and vibrant world, but it's also a much more complex one uh, when you're doing spiritual coaching because you're working on a different level. You're not in your head. Life coaching is typically done in the head. It's like, I'm gonna, you're going to hear what's going on. I'm going to think through it. I'm going to help you think through it. We're going to work together. We're going to figure out the other side. Not 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 whacking on life coaches at all. They absolutely have a value and, and there's a purpose to them. And this is not that, right? We are working on multi-dimensional levels and we are doing things that life coaches don't even pick up on most of the time. The best ones do, but you know, most life coaches don't even pick up on. So, um, you know, this is, it's, it's a different animal and therefore it requires different skill sets. And so, you know, the presence practice and the stillness and the centering and the focus and the being with and sitting in the soup and not having to come to a conclusion too quickly and allowing things to surface and allowing things to come to you and listening for the thunk and listening for the push. And all of these things are part of being a great spiritual coach um, or being a spiritual coach at all, actually. So staying um, out of judgment mm -hmm. and staying out of... Uh, Lust for results. Yeah, need for results, right? You know, when you are attached to the result at a higher level than your client is, that is a that is a dynamic for manipulation. Yep. And you will manipulate them rather than help them. So, yeah, we talked about that in another episode too. But, yes, yep. great reminder on that one. So, yeah, so that's, that's kind of what we're talking about with the power of presence here. So, you know... Um, Practice it, right? <laughs> Practice the power of presence. P P P. P P P. <laughs> Practice the power of presence. Mother, can I have some petite 
marshmallows in my co cocoa. Yeah, there we go. Ha <laughs> Look at that. Uh, yeah, when Harry Please, met Sally. Uh, may I have another bowl of presents? <laughs> now we're cross-referencing to Oliver. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we're mushing things together and messing with people's brains that, that probably don't even know what the hell we're talking about it. So anyway, so Kellyism for the day is going to be, if you're not present, you're not doing it right. So that's your, that's your takeaway for the day. Um, and so, you know, guys, really thank you so much for listening. I'm, I'm floored every day at how many people download this podcast every day. And, and at how much you guys share your podcasts with, share my pod, my our podcast with everybody you know, and I so appreciate that. And all the people who rate and subscribe and like, and you know, I mean, it's just you guys are awesome. And so, if you have not had a chance to rate and subscribe and like and join the mailing list and join the Facebook group, we do have a Facebook group called Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta. Um, if you have not had a chance to do that, please do, uh, because, uh, you know, there's good stuff in there and the guests are all in there. And so if you want to talk to any of the guests who have been on the show, that's a great way to get in contact with them. And it's a great way to, you know, help me out when I'm going, I don't know what to talk about next. <laughs> so, uh, that, you know, if you ever want to just determine what happens on the show, that's a great way to do it is be in the Facebook group. So, um, but thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of this community and, and being here with me. Um, and uh, Kathy, thank you for pinch hitting. <laughs> I'm probably going to ask you to do it again because we're going to figure this out, but we'll see. Um, and uh, thanks, guys, for, for hanging in, and we'll, we will see you next week. Have a great one. Um, this, uh, uh, let, me, let me see if I can do the outro. This has been Spirit Sherpa. Uh, no, I don't have it. <laughs> I've only listened to it for five and a half years. This has been spirit. You, you know, so long. This, this has been spirit. Uh, uh, yeah, this is. This is Are you at, at the so long and thanks for all the fish? So long and thanks for all the fish. Yes. That's, that's, <laughs> there we go. This that's has another. been spirit. Sherpa. So long and thanks, thanks for, all, for the all the fish. You guys rock. <laughs> this is Kelly and Kathy signing out. Okay, <laughs> have okay. a good one. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Oh my God, that was...